I don't know if this is even going to come out, but I've had quite a few people ask me about um, how to tell, a quick way to tell the gear ratio in the rear end of a car, rear axle. And I want to try to show that in this film. I've got this 63 Chevrolet that has a, um, a single track rear axle. And you do that one a little bit differently than you do, say, a posi track. And that Corvette up there's got a posi track rear axle on attempt to film and show the differences but um, on a single track you can uh, jack up one rear wheel and leave the other rear wheel on the ground and um, place the car in neutral and then um, spin one wheel if it's a single track rear axle, spin one wheel around twice and count the number of revolutions the drive shaft turns. Now, I put a little masking tape mark on this tire uh, about there by the ground. And I've also put a piece of tape on that drive shaft. And I'll count the number of times the drive shaft turns around and get an approximate idea. Okay. Okay, so the drive shaft has turned one time around and the wheel has gone almost one time around. There's twice. The drive shaft has gone around twice. And the wheel has gone around a little bit past one time. That's the third time that that has, uh, drive shaft has turned around and the wheel has now gone around twice. Uh, so with it going around twice and the drive shaft turning around just a little bit past three times, that would give this car a, approximately, a, well it would give it a 308 rear axle ratio. I know that that's what these came with. Now then, on a posi track car, you have to have it in neutral. No problem on this car, it doesn't even have a drive shaft in it. And you can turn one rear wheel around one time and count the number of times the drive shaft yoke or the uh, rear end yoke turns around and get an, an idea on that. But you only have to turn it once because you're not. Uh, being affected by the the spider gears. Let me see if I can put a piece of tape on this rear end. That's hard to see up there. This is not exactly the best car to do this with. I don't know if you can tell. There's a drive shaft yoke up there at the front with a piece of tape on it. And I got a piece of tape on the wheel. gone around once, twice, three, four, and I already know this car has a 411 rear end, so a little bit past that, and I bet you my two tape marks on the car match up. As I said, I turned the rear axle around once because it's a posi track. There you can see. This car has a 411 rear axle and the 63 Chevy has a 308. Like I said, on a single track rear end, you've got to turn that wheel around twice to compensate for the spider gears. This is my latest project, the 67 Corvette. It's got the 67 Corvette 427 engine in it. As far as I know, it's never been wrecked. It's just been disassembled. I got almost two of every part to it. It came with many extra parts. I just have to put it together. It ought to make a fun car. Boy, do I have my work cut out for me. The guy I bought it from had had it uh, for about 40 years. 
It's got two sets of seats that come with it. Basically two dashes. It has two top, both tops. It's a Roadster. That's a removable hard top and it also has the folding convertible top. I can't wait to build it. Anyway, I hope that somehow another made sense on how a quick way to check a gear ratio. You know, when you go into a wrecking yard and a car's jacked up and you're curious what rear axle ratio is in it, you can take and, and, and do the same thing I did with that 63 Chevy because most cars are just going to be a uh, single track rear axle. You jack up one wheel, put the car in neutral, turn that wheel around twice and count the number of times the drive shaft turns around. You know, if it turns around three and a half times, you got a 350 gear ratio. Four times, you got about a 411, and you can figure it from there. And on the posi tracks, you only have to turn the wheel around one time and count the number of times the drive shaft turns around. Quick, easy way to tell gear ratios. Thanks for watching.